Journalists got access this week to a damaged and dangerous facility they often report on but rarely visit. The operators of Fukushima Daiichi allow the media to tour the nuclear plant. A team from NHK went inside. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials have restricted access to Fukushima Daiichi since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami crippled the facility. Four reactors were damaged. Three of them suffered meltdowns. The plant is far from stable and radiation levels are still high. NHK World's chief correspondent Akira Hombo was one of the journalists who entered the site. Akira, you weren't wearing a protective suit. Weren't they necessary? The site has been cleaned up to keep the contaminated particles in the air to a minimum. Mm -hmm. We wore masks, gloves, and shoe coverings as a safety precaution. Mm -hmm. We entered through the main gate and visited the control center. The radiation level climbed from 3.5 microsievert per hour to 30. The highest reading was on the ocean side of the building. That houses the number three reactor. It was over 1,300. Radiation levels remain high. We only stayed there for an hour. By comparison, for example, the background radiation level in New York is between 0.05 and 0.25. So it's quite high. Now, ultimately, the utility will have to dismantle the reactors. What kind of work is going on now at the plant? At this point, the most important task remains to cool down the melted fuel mm -hmm. inside the damaged units. The fuel could be as hot as a one megawatt heater. It's similar to heat emitted by 1,000 electric stoves in a small space. If these units aren't kept consistently cool, another meltdown could happen. The spent fuel rods are also stored in all, react all the reactor buildings. The other important task is to remove them. And this fuel also produces heat, so it has to be kept cool in a pool filled with water. Spent fuel must be cooled until it becomes stable. Work had already started at the number four unit. It houses the largest amount of spent fuel, and it's the easiest area for workers to access, since this reactor didn't melt down. A typical plans to start the removal process in November. Once the spent fuel is removed, it will be transferred to a fuel pool built above ground. But the pool is not big enough to store all the spent fuel. So TEPCO plans to build a new facility that relies on helium instead of water as a current. How long is it going to take to remove the fuel and dismantle the reactors? Uh, TEPCO aims to remove all the spent fuel by 2021. The next step is to remove melted fuel from the reactors. Uh, they plan to finish that by 2036. The entire procedure will take until 2051. That is 40 years after the accident. What are the major obstacles? Uh, let me uh, highlight the three major issues that must be addressed. Mm -hmm. The first is to develop robots that can operate under high levels of radiation. The second is to make sure there are enough workers with sufficient skills to complete the job. The third is to dispose of the radioactive materials, including contaminated water, debris, and fuel. Beyond that, I think it's also important to consider the decommissioning process as a valuable experience. We must share what we learn from this process with the international community. It's going to be a long journey. We need to keep a close eye on the work to make sure the right steps are taken and that information is shared. I'll keep you updated. Akira, thanks.